we actually have something to talk about. <laughs> Okay, boils and ghouls, so this is going to be a very off-the-cuff, uncrypted crypt discussions. Okay, so basically right now, there is big news for all you crypt fans out there, all you boils and ghouls who have been wanting to know what we could get in the future for the Lost Tales film, Dead Easy, a.k.a. Fat Tuesday. Now, for those of you maggots who are not aware, Todd Masters, a long time ago, actually dropped a few pieces of concept art for one of the main creatures that was meant to be involved in the entire plot of the film. In the concept art, we see designs of a clown-like jester or even a evil harlequin. Just looking at the designs itself, it's absolutely terrifying. They're, they're sinister. Um, and we don't even know if it was just one single harlequin or if it was meant to be multiple. Uh, based on the art, it looks like there could have been uh, variants of this kind of um, creature or maybe there's one specific one and there's only just one uh, but based on what we see here uh, this this creature has gone through a multitude of designs um, and it, it could have been similar to how we saw in Demon Knight where we had the collector and then we had the demons and even the demons had their own variety of aesthetics in terms of how each one specifically looked with an overall design, a core concept, so to speak. Now, information about the film was very scarce at the time, uh, especially when Demon Knight was just getting released. Any information about it was sporadic. Um, back in Fangoria days, you know, early magazine days for Fangoria, you know, we would actually get um, small little articles uh, speaking about the film and what... Um, Gil Adler and A.L. Katz were actually intending on doing with the film script uh, written by J.B. Kelly. And if any of you recall, I actually did an interview with uh, A.L. Katz, one of the main and head writers and producers of Tales from the Crypt on HBO. And one of the main questions I had to ask him was, when are we going to see a script on Dead Easy? We mentioned Fat Tuesday, aka Dead uh, Dead Easy. Yeah. Uh, the original script made by J.P. Kelly uh, yeah. was, has not yet been seen, uh, and you and Gil did revisions on the script. Um, it originally involved a man remembering uh, trauma, possibly involving child abuse, uh, which, uh, if I recall, you felt was a bit too much. Uh, can you tell us what we can have expected with Dead Easy's revisions, or if at all we can even expect a, a draft of the script? Of, of the script i've got i've got a copy here i've got a hard copy really yeah you, just give me one second I'll, I'll... absolutely yeah i think i put it somewhere for safe keeping where i couldn't spill something on it anyway yes uh one of the things that 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 i'm thinking about we're thinking about doing is uh at some point during the second season uh maybe put that out there as a kind of a special bonus material thing Oh, that that'd be great. I'm I'm sure a lot of fans would love to see it. Uh, a lot of diehard fans, because uh, we've we've had this movie being held above our heads in terms of like a rumor or like you know something on the hook, and everyone's been trying to find out more and more about it. We've seen concept art from Tom Masters, uh, but you know we have not yet seen a script or any sort of concepts uh, based on the film, and we would love to see it. It exists. And here we are today, boils and ghouls, where I can proudly and finally announce to you all that thanks to Dads from the Crypt and How Not to Make a Movie podcast, we are finally going to get our first official live, if you'll forgive the expression, reading of the script for Dead Easy. Now, I already know what the first question is from all of you boils and ghouls right now after hearing this big announcement, the how, when, and where. The How Not to Make a Movie podcast that's hosted by A.L. Katz and Gil Adler, they already have all the information put out. But they also went one step further and posted it on their actual website so everyone can get a glance at it. But I actually posted it here on the video. That way you guys can get a head start. The link will also be in the description. So 
as you see right there in the header, it is a live table reading for charity. Reading the page, the information goes as follows. The live table read for charity. Please join us and the Crypt Keeper at noon Pacific time on Saturday, December 17th for a live table read for charity. Some movie projects become legend without ever getting made. Tales from the Crypt presents Dead Easy is one of them. We'll be reading Dead Easy, the Tales from the Crypt feature film that never happened because Bordello of Blood happened instead. Hey, there's a whole terrific podcast about it that Entertainment Weekly called the best film podcast of 2022. Long rumored finally found. We located the world's one existing hard copy of the Dead Easy script. Fans have been wondering and asking about it for two decades. We will at last answer all those questions. What would Dead Easy have been like had we made it instead of Bordello of Blood? The charity live reading seems to be for the Motion Picture Home, MPTF, uh, which is stationed at Wasserman Campus. They look after film folk like us if and when we're in need. They're going through some perilously hard times right now. That's why we're doing this. We're the film community stepping up for the film community. That's awesome to hear, honestly. You know, and that's exactly why um, I, I'm definitely going to donate for this. But continuing on, let's get right into our cast for this live table reading of the script. We have Sean Astin, Jake Busey, Tia Carrere, Brett Cullen, John Kassir reprising his role as the Crypt Keeper, Chelsea Rebecca of Dead Meat fame, and Leslie Zemeckis. In case you guys don't know who Leslie Zemeckis is, Leslie Zemeckis is actually the wife of Robert Zemeckis, who had a huge hand and part in creating tales from the start. And she herself has left an outstanding mark and stamp on the world of Holly Weird. And can we just talk about the fact that the Crypt Keeper has his own cast credit here? That tells me right now that John Kassir is actually going to be voicing other characters along with the Crypt Keeper. In case some of you diehard fans have not noticed yet, we actually have a legacy casting in the first three actors and actresses on this cast list. Sean Astin, whose father John Astin was actually in Top Billing. Then we have Jake Busey, who was also in a previous episode in Season 6, Surprise Party, and Tia Carrere, who was actually in an episode in Season 4, On a Dead Man's Chest. But let's get into the premise of the whole story, which I'm pretty sure is what everyone is also wanting to know. Dead Easy, the story in a nutshell, Lloyd Harrison knows his Cajun family put him up for adoption when he was 6, but never knew why. Now the father of a six-year-old himself, Lloyd learns his family's secret, why they sent him away. Lloyd comes from a family of shamans. His father broke bad and was condemned to a purgatory-like afterlife. Appearing in reality as a shadow harlequin, he snares his grandson's soul and tries to use it to return from the dead. Only Lloyd can stop him and save his son. And this confirms what we had initially thought when it came down to the overall plot of the, uh, of the film where we had some kind of deep-seated um, childhood trauma that was possibly linked to the main character and how it has to correlate with what he's dealing with as a, as a, as a father. And it's all, it pretty much comes all full circle. We have, the, we have the grandson, the son, and the grandfather. Almost seems like there's going to be a, uh, a uh, sins of the father type thing going on here with the uh, overall theme between these uh, three characters. But going back to what we originally knew, um, it does seem like we're still going to get this somewhere set in Louisiana, somewhere in the Deep South, uh, talking about the Cajun upbringing or Cajun family. Um, and we also seem to be having somewhat of a voodoo uh, element here with the shamans being involved. So, I mean, like, it seems like everything that we once knew about the film is very much uh, uh, true when it comes down to this uh, script. And I, I, I can't wait to, to actually be a part of this table reading. And I can't wait to hear um, these actors and actresses uh, play it out. And here are the instructions on how to get access to this live table reading for charity. Uh, number one, donate at this website here. Uh, the amount is up to you, but please be as minchy as you can. Two, email your virtual receipt saying that you made your donation to deadeasy2022 at gmail.com. Three, you will receive an immediate thank you with instructions to be on the lookout for a second email. The second email will contain the link to the private YouTube table read performance space we've created. And five, on Saturday, December 17th at noon Pacific time, click on the link and enjoy. We look forward to seeing you there. Now, I am absolutely thrilled that this is happening. I cannot believe 
we are actually going to get this film uh, actually read to us. And it, it, it's it's one of those things that as a Tales from the Crypt fan, this is, oh my God, like it, it, it is so awesome and amazing that we are going to finally find out what we were we what what we've been missing for so many years as Tales fans especially when uh we had such a, a sour taste in our mouth for Bordello of Blood I mean uh to a small degree I have a small place in my heart for it but overall in terms of what we could have had um this is something that I um am deeply deeply excited for and it's going to bring a lot of closure into the um the inner inner thought of what would Tales have been like if the film was actually put into production and completed? You know, would Tales still even be a thing many years after that film's debut? And if season seven would have been the nail in the coffin for the show? Would it, Would the film have led to a eight season? You know what I mean? Like, so, like, this is, this is one of those things where... Um, it's going to be a great thing for the fans to enjoy. And I, this is why I'm sharing it with you all because I want you to get all aboard the hype train and I want you to share this moment with me because I have already donated to this cause and I definitely want to be a part of this moment where we are going to not only help people within this medium, but we are also going to show our thanks for the efforts that these people have gone through for us to bring us this moment. So make sure you guys check out the link and donate to the Motion Picture Home. And that way you guys can get your access to the live table reading. And you guys can join me on the 17th and we will all enjoy and get what we ask for. With that being said, my name is Jonathan, your Master of Ceremonies. Have a good fright and pleasant screams.